Okay, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is my second video. In this video, I'm going to give a handful of tips on what to do if you're arrested by the police and what to do in interview. Secondly, I'm going to explain what happened to me on the day I was arrested and the interview process. I had two interviews in the end. And thirdly, I'm going to direct you to a very good lecture by an American professor on explaining why you shouldn't talk to the police. So hold on for that, that'll be very interesting. So who, who am I? I was arrested for a criminal offence. I've explained this in another video, but as a quick reminder. And uh, anyway, I was on bail for three years before the case against me was dropped in the Crown Court in the UK. I was confused and angry and in fact as mad as hell so I ended up being creative and writing a couple of books about it and now I've set up this channel to share my experience and thoughts. It might be of use to you or someone someday. First of all a disclaimer. I'm not a legal professional and the thoughts, advice and reflections here are my own as a layperson. I'm just someone who's gone through the legal process and spent as I said three years on bail charged with a crime I did not commit. I recommend you get advice from a properly qualified legal professional. Anyway, tip one, don't talk to the police. Now there are well, at least two parts to this. Firstly, before you are formally arrested. And secondly, when you are at the police station. At all points, be careful what you say and also what you don't say. And of course, don't admit anything. This might go against your instinct as it did for me, but I'll, I'll explain my case um, a bit later. But it is well worth the advice, so don't. As the police say, everything you say could be used against you in a court of law. I would even go further. Everything you do not say could be used against you in a court of law. If you don't refer to something or you change a detail, it could be used against you when you're being interviewed. And it will be reported and recorded on tape in the interview and played back in the courtroom. So any protestations in the court might come to nothing if you're not careful. If you do mention anything beforehand, keep it factual and checkable, but ideally say little to nothing. Once arrested, you'll be taken to the police station and booked in by the custody officer. You can give answers to your name and so on, that's fine. Then you'll be put in a cell ahead of interview. Before you arrive at the police station, say little to nothing. Tip two. Now at some point you'll be asked, usually when you're arrested, if you want a solicitor, the answer is yes. Let me repeat that, yes, the answer is yes. Even if you are completely confident in your innocence, the answer is yes. You do not have to use a family solicitor or legal representative. In fact, in many ways you shouldn't, nor should you call a friend who has legal experience. Use the duty solicitor in the UK or the public defender in the US or whatever it is in your country. Someone who works in criminal law and someone who is used to dealing with the police in these situations. I cannot stress that enough. So always, always use the duty solicitor or the public defender. If the duty solicitor is not in the building and you might have to wait for him or her to, to arrive, you might be waiting for a few hours and that is fine. Just wait in your cell. You'll be updated by the police officers. You may be allowed to speak to a solicitor over the phone. Again, this is fine. But be careful what you say over the telephone because the police might be listening and they might treat what they record as evidence. Uh, well, not as evidence, but as intelligence. And that is the, the crucial difference. So they can't admit it to court, but it might be useful in their investigation and they might use it in some way as leverage. I have a whole different video coming on uh, intelligence and what it is and how it can be treated by the police and courts and how it can impact your case. One other thing to note that there is no charge, financial charge, for using the duty solicitor, uh, certainly in the UK. It is of no cost to you while you are in the police station. Outside the police station is probably a different matter, but while you are in the police station, there is no cost. But again, check with your solicitor. These things might change depending on where you are and when uh, you are watching this video. Tip three. Once the solicitor or public defender arrives, you'll be escorted into a room and should be able to have a private conversation with your solicitor. Follow the solicitor's advice, which may well be to say no comment to the questions asked of you in the interview. Now again, I know this might go against your instinct, but just do it. You can always give an updated statement prepared by you and the solicitor that afternoon, the following day, the following week. 
But if your solicitor says, say nothing, reply no comment in the interview, do that, reply no comment, no confessions, admit nothing, even if it goes against your instinct. Now, I'm not the only one to say this. I'm going to refer you to an anonymous writer called Night Jack about life in the police force. This this blogger was eventually outed by the Times newspaper in the UK as a police detective in the Lancashire Constabulary. Now, for years, Night Jack had blogged about life as a detective constable, but he gave an awful lot of useful advice under various headings, such as complain first, always, make a counter-allegation, claim suicidal thoughts, actively complain about every officer and everything that they do. But I'm, I'm going to quote a few here uh, that are particularly useful for the interview. Firstly, never explain to the police. If the police arrive to lock you up, say nothing. You are a decent person. You might think that reasoning with the police will help. If I can only explain, they will realise it is all a horrible mistake and go away. Wrong. We do want to talk to you on tape in an interview room, but that comes later. We, the police, call that stuff a significant statement, and we love it. Decent folk can't help themselves. They think they can talk their way out of it. Wrong. Admit nothing. To do anything more than lock you up for a few hours, we, the police, need to prove a case. The easiest route to that is your admission. Without it, our case may be a lot weaker, and maybe not enough to charge you with. In any case, it is always worth finding out exactly how damning the evidence is before you fall on your sword. Don't do the decent and honourable thing and admit what you've done. Don't even deny it or even try to give your side of the story. Just say nothing. No confession and the CPS, the Criminal Prosecution Service, are on the back foot already. They foresee a trial and they fear a trial. They are looking for any excuse to send you home free. Keep your mouth shut. Say as little as possible. At the custody desk, a sergeant will ask you some questions. It is safe to answer these. For the rest of the time, say nothing. Now this one I said before. Always, always, always have a solicitor. Unless you know 100% for sure that your mate, the solicitor, does criminal law and is good at it, ask for the duty solicitor. They certainly do criminal law and they are good at it. Then listen to what the solicitor says and do it. Their job is to get you off without the cops or the CPS laying a glove on you if that is at all possible. It is what they are paid for. They are free to you. There is no downside. Now, decent folk think it makes them look as if they have something to hide if they ask for a solicitor. Irrelevant. Going into an interview without a solicitor, bad things are very likely to happen to you. I wouldn't do it, and I interview people for a living. Show no respect to the legal system or anybody working in it. You think that if you are difficult, unpleasant, sneering, uncooperative and rude, things will go badly for you and you'll be in trouble. It seems, in fact, the worse you are, the easier things will go for you if you do end up convicted. So there you go. Basically, anything you try and do because you are decent and straightforward hurts you badly. Act like a habitual professional lifestyle criminal and the chances are you will walk away relatively unscathed. Copy the bad guys. It's what they do for a living. Uh, now, before I get there, I, I will go into... I want to go into my own case in a little bit of detail. I'll go into my the general dynamics of my case in other videos, and I've mentioned it and the charges, but I was on bail for three years. But I will explain what happened to me when I was first... I was interviewed twice by the police. So uh, the police turned up at my house at 7.40 on a Tuesday morning. Um, they knocked on the door. They took, they took all my computer equipment and said I'd been arrested on suspicion of downloading indecent images. I was taken down to the police station. I sat in a cell for six six hours having been booked in. Uh, and then I was waiting for my solicitor to come. I met one and then I met another and there were two of them in the room. When they looked at the, it was, seemed to be a sort of information sheet from the police on why I'd been arrested. They both said, say nothing. And I said, you know, I'm innocent of these these uh, accusations and they were very very firm both a man and a woman they're both solicitors from the same firm they said say nothing say no comment to every question they ask and i was a bit taken aback and i thought well you know wh- what do i what do i have to hide and they said say nothing say no comment to everything one of the bits of paperwork they supplied to the solicitor implied that i had 
I might have admitted something when in fact that was completely wrong. And they quoted me from what I was saying in the house when they first arrested me that morning. And they were taking things out of context and they were spinning it as if I was somehow sort of admitting guilt when in fact it wasn't in any shape or form the case. Having seen that on the on the paper that the police supplied to the solicitor, I, I took their advice, you know, because I was feeling a bit shell-shocked. And uh, I had a 45-minute interview uh, when the police just read through a series of questions asking me this and that. All the questions were very mundane. They, they could apply to any, anybody and everything relating to, you know, what computer do you have? Do you have locks on your doors? All these kinds of things. There's nothing specific. And I replied uh, no comment to everything. And I think it, I'm absolutely unequivocally correct and I would recommend that to anybody and everything you can always go back the following day or the following afternoon or the next week and supply a another written statement if you want to communicate some things to the police but you don't have to do it on the spot so after the interviewer and after a second interview which went the same way I drafted a one-page statement for the solicitor to make it available to the police if they wanted to but it never came to that in the end Okay, and finally, here is um, a video which I think you should see. It is by uh, Professor James Duane at the Regent University School of Law. This was a video that was published in in 2012. It's had many, many views, but I think it's probably the best on the YouTube website for talking about this kind of thing, about advising on not talking to the police. It is a 45-minute video. He talks for about... 25 minutes then hands over to a police detective who then talks a little bit more from from the police's perspective but again it's worth it i'm proud to admit on camera and on the internet that i will never talk to any police officer under any circumstances with all due respect sir so um it's well worth it and i'll put a link in the in the description below also there's no harm in having a look at this video this is by viva Frey. he's a youtuber who talks about legal issues and he this particular video is useful in terms of when and how to talk about legal matters in a legal setting. He's talking about a civil case, but again, the the principle applies. So again, do have a look at that, and I think you'll find that very helpful. So, but this is the main one. Uh, Please subscribe, and if you're interested in helping me, then you can buy the books, obviously. You can find them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. So they're titled Mad as Hell, Parts 1 and 2 by David N. Anderson. Um, But there's also, I'm setting up a Patreon account, so if you want to support me and help me try and knock out more videos, that'd be a great help. Okay, thank you.